and welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Naya Greathenge. That's right, we are making a big Naya deck with a whole bunch of sweet creatures that we're going to be playing here and of course have three the Great Henge for our card advantage engine. So yeah, that, that's kind of like what our deck's about. Let's just play a whole bunch of creatures. We got 30 creatures in here, 25 lands, five non-creatures, got a couple of Vivians in here also to help make our creatures larger, which is better for the Great Henge, and give them trample, you know, help us win, you know, finish off some games uh, with some board stalls. Uh, Vivian can do that. Um, as far as white, we got Oketra in here. So each creature, like whenever we cast a creature, we not only make a 4-4 token, but then we also, well, if we have a Grumgoli in play, it's a 5-5 token. But then, you know, we also put a counter on it, draw a card. So each each creature has, you know, if we have Oketra and Great Henge, would have draw an extra card and make a 4-4 zombie. If we have a Beast Whisperer in play, we get to draw two cards each time we play a creature. Um, and uh, the Great Henge is also whenever the creature enters the battlefield. So we have a couple Charming Prints. We can you know, flicker a creature, have it re-enter, trigger the Great Henge again. So, you know, like, Charming Prince can draw two cards with the Great Henge out by flickering a creature. And some creatures are really good to flicker, especially, like, Ravager Worm. Like, you know, you can have Ravager Worm fight something. Yeah, you flicker, have Charming Prince flicker, Ravager Worm comes back. It's kind of the same thing with Tulsimer. It can come back, fight some more things, um, you know, trigger the Great Henge some more. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff this this deck can do like that. You know, maybe you want to flicker a Ronus and, and make the creatures, you know, even bigger. Uh, you know, Ronus, Ronus's trigger with Vivian giving Trample can just do tons and tons of damage. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, our deck is, does not like... Uh, yeah, a Prince can flicker a Prince. So, yeah, if, if we have the two two Princes, we can just flicker them back and forth and just continu continually flicker them and, and draw cards with the Great Henge. It's very slow, of course, because, you know, it enters at the beginning of the next end step. So it's not like it just keeps on happening. So you, you like, play one, flicker the other, end step, it comes back, you flicker, and then the next end step, it will come back, flicker again. And so it's, it's, very, it's a slow process, but you can do it. Um, yeah, this is kind of like Naya Legends, except, for, you know, that, that had more Planeswalkers and stuff, but same kind of thing here. Um, but yeah, so like there's there's just a lot going on here. We don't want to see like Oko. You know, Oko makes playing all these kind of creatures pretty rough because Oko turns all these into three threes. And so therefore I have three sorcerer spyglass in the sideboard because of Oko wrecking our deck pretty bad. Um we have uh also like there's a lot of sweepers being played right now, you know, with like the uh like the the goalless field of the dead decks. Like they're all playing uh sweepers. And so I have one unbreakable formation in the sideboard to let our creature stay alive through a sweeper. I thought about playing multiple, but unbreakable formation is the kind of card that you don't really want to draw multiple because you want your first one just to be able to kill your opponent whenever you draw it. Yeah, we're playing Naya Great Henge. There we go. All right, so yeah, we're playing the Naya deck. Um, all right, so that's that's kind of what our deck's about. I got a bunch of Knight of Autumns because of... There's a lot of artifacts and enchantments to destroy these days. Um, I know my side, my sideboard's not really good for the Vivian minus five, but our deck's not really about the Vivian minus five. We're going to be wanting to plus one and minus three. Um, yeah, so like one's enough. Like we want to draw the one. If we don't draw the one, you know, we'll try to play around the sweeper, but hopefully we, we draw the one and the one should hopefully win the game whenever played. All right, but this is a donation deck. So we're going to play through a league. This is the kind of donation deck that was just a, a donation of, you know, build. Like, besides, so with donation decks, you can do two things. You can you can submit your own deck, and, you know, I'll play your deck through a league. Or you can also just submit a, a an idea that you want a deck made. And this was just a donation for build a Naya Great Henge deck. And so that's what we put together here, so... Um, if you have like an idea like that or a couple of cards that you want to see put together, you can also donate for me to build a deck like that as well. All right, we're going to keep this. We're going to ditch 
incubation druid because of we're gonna keep like the different two drops because of legion's end looks like it hawkeye wants it to be his camera time right now So we're going to lead with Paradise Druid because it has Hexproof. And then try, try to play Beast Whisper on turn three and then untap and play some more creatures. I don't know if like, my opponent may be like Simic Flash here. <laughs> yeah, it looks like Simic Flash. That's unfortunate. Our mana base isn't too bad, especially with Paradise Druids and Growth Chamber Guardians and stuff. All right, we're just stomping on some Merfolk Pirates. So it looks like our opponent's playing Is It Flash? Which this was a this was a five O list that came out today. Their counter spells are Ionize and Mystical Dispute. Okay, no, they're not playing Is It Flash. At least not the version I saw, because it did not have Crackling Drake in the main. This is going to be kind of hard to finish this game out and kill my opponent before, you know, like, this is definitely a race. It's going to be kind of hard to win this race, to be honest. It's kind of a, like, Crackling Drake's difficult card to race. At least their instant that bounces my card doesn't actually count as an instant for Crackling Drake. So I guess their their plan is was to like counter questing beast and then have their 3-4 Drake trade. I think that's their plan. And of course they could shock Growth Chamber Guardian here. I'm not like holding up the adapt part, but it still draws a card, so it still still gets me another card. Even if they shock it. I 
Their plan is just to outburst me. Why did they not just attack with Crackling Drake last turn? Anyone who stands in my way is getting sizzled. Let's make some more room to Maybe this in. is the list that I that was on Goldfish. Maybe they just had Crackling Drake main. Because all these other cards were in the deck. No, it had Crackling Drake in the sideboard. It had all these other cards, though. So it's just a little bit different. That was the... Unfortunately... And yeah, we, we will trade with Crackling Drake there. Fortunately, we didn't have anything else to follow that up. Chandra Minus. Devastating. Getting a little warm. Not even a four for one because it, no, it didn't even trade with the card because you still have the Chandra out there. So just got rid of four cards. What do you play to not lose every match to any Golo stack? Um, you probably need more Ashiok. That's probably the first thing. <clears throat> okay, so you know, like they're playing these counter spells. I want Veil of Summer. Probably want Devout Decree. I don't think I want Unbreakable Formation. I mean, Spyglass for Chandra. Yeah, they have. They can bounce Spyglass. So this is six cards. Taking out the Incubation Druids because they're so weak to shock. So I can pay two life to do two damage to the opponent. Eh. Stomp on these merfolks still. I do it yeah, I do it off screen off stream, the the building of the deck. Cause it, it you know, it takes a while. Like I you know, I usually take any you know, it takes anywhere from like thirty minutes to an hour or two to build a deck. And so I don't don't have it like all on stream. Kinda wanna draw some more spells.
The good part about um, Fable Passage, though, is it does, you know, thins the deck just a little bit. But hopefully that little bit helps us drawing more spells and not so many lands. Hey, Hawkeye. Hey. Go, Questing Beast, go. No Rouse Outburst for you. Kill my Bone Crusher Giant and draw a card. No, thank you. We'll just trade Bone Crusher Giants. I think that's reasonable. Our Bone Crusher also killed a Cutthroat. Trample, though. Interesting, interesting. ZR Stroud. Thanks for that tier one sub. Thank you so much there. 23rd sub of the day. Thanks for keeping on that 10 month streak there. ZR. So I don't want to tap out. I didn't want to tap out at end step and let them, you know, do do something that was like three damage to this to like one of my growth chamber guardians first. They need to, you know, like this is lethal, so like they they're gonna need to do the first thing. Then I can I can respond to whatever they want to do. Oh, uh, nice, ZR. Good. We can get that, that Growth Chamber Guardian back that was just put into the library. All right, so played that very well against Shock. So I'm sure they probably had Shock before. They're waiting for me to activate Growth Chamber Guardian. So played that very well. They're down to four. We still have all this stuff. Uh, 
Alright, I'm just gonna play Grum Goalie. And then Growth Chamber Guardian. It does mean that. Doesn't mean we don't get to adapt to the Growth Chamber Guardian, so it's just a 3-3, three, three, but with having with having Ronus making 3-3s three, isn't so bad. I guess the problem with making 3-3s, three, though, is Chandra. I guess I didn't quite consider Chandra whenever I started making this line. I was thinking, like, you know, them having X4s to block. Uh, I guess that was the problem. With my line was Chandra. Are you an elemental? Are you an elemental? No. Everyone knows the bigger explosions are more fun. That's unfortunate. Ugh. Well, my opponent had the card to punish my line. So I'm not going to shock Chandra immediately. I'm going to let them minus with Chandra and team up with a burn spell to kill Ronus, but then my Bone Crusher finishes off Chandra. Okay. No, Ted, I won't be. I wish I would have played that turn differently instead of making three three threes. Really wish I would have played that turn differently. Where'd Hawkeye go? I don't know. I don't know. He's around. He's been up here for most of the video. No, my opponent's not rage quitting. I'm sure they're they're thinking about what to do. It wouldn't make any sense to, to rage quit here because the bone the bone crusher giant doesn't really help me win any more than like than like what the Ronus had. Like maybe like they may have just just disconnected. That that makes a rage quit doesn't really make any sense. Yeah, they they could have yeah they they could have crashed. All right, Vanner, take care. I, I, I guess Hawkeye's probably over in on the other room. I'm not sure. I could try calling him, see if he comes over. Hawkeye. Okay. Oh, there he is. Hawkeye, okay, come here. Yeah. You gonna jump? 
Well, he came, he came running, but now he's just sitting, sitting right here. You're gonna jump or not? You want me to pick you up? <laughs> he does not want me to pick him up. Come here. Ugh. He is not. He does not want to jump up here. But there we go. There's Hawkeye. I was just trying out your Demir artifacts, except I splashed green for Oko and Goose. Hydrocrasis might work with Affinity too. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I really want those cards, honestly. I want to be able to, you know, play all those those cards for free. Like it, that, I don't know. It cuts down a lot of, like what the deck's doing, and just turns it into a Sultai, good stuff deck and. That's not really what I want that deck to do. Um, yeah, we'll just keep it. Hawkeye stream. Such a good kitty. He just calls his name, he comes running. No, I, I think that my opponent, no, I think my opponent just accidentally disconnected or like not, I mean, you don't just accidentally, but you know, like I think, I think their like connection got lost or something, you know, like maybe like their computer crashed or something, you know, like I think something like that happened with my opponent. It, it wouldn't really make the, it's definitely not a rage quit. It wouldn't make sense to like go to their turn plus Chandra, you know, could, you know, continue on and like how, you know, like pass the turn. And then I play something that does two damage when it, they were going to take lethal from the other thing and then just rage quit. Like, that doesn't make any sense. So I think something happened. Like their computer crashed or internet went down or something like that. Thanks, Pemberton. I try to be. But unfortunately, that means that we, you know, we have to wait here. We'll see if they get to reconnect or not. Unfortunate timing for my opponent to disconnect. You're up a game, and, you know, maybe they had a good plan. We don't know what those three cards in hand were. Maybe maybe their hand was loaded with, like, Brazen Borrowers and stuff. I think Ashiok is better than Trophy against the Field of the Dead decks. <laughs> you had somebody play Rampage of the Clans against you? That's nice. Yeah, it's a pretty cool blue red deck. So I think it's I think it's just like this deck if you want to see like the blue red list. It's his is just a tad bit different with having Crackling Drake in the main. Like our opponents is, but basically the same deck that was on the 50 list from today. Okay, well that counts as a win in a league. We're one to know. Let's try to get to five. Yeah, I've been there. I've 
disconnected. You know, they had like computer crash times like that before. <laughs> what if we immediately got paired against the same opponent? And you're just like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> it's just immediate repair. <laughs> hard, yeah, it's hard to disconnect in a game store with Paper Magic. It it happens though. Like you'll, um, you know, like you'll like just be outside talking with your friends or whatever in between rounds, and then they're like, "New round, new pairings," and. And uh, you don't you don't get back to your seat. And you get a game loss for being tardy. So it can happen. You can disconnect IRL. So I, just I decided to try going Grum Goalie first before dropping GCGs. Because I wasn't blocking. You know, if I could have played Growth Chamber Guardian on turn two, but I wasn't blocking with it anyway, so I might as well just get a, a Shock Land in. Hopefully my opponent is generous. Yay. They're I'm glad our opponent is as generous as Grum Goalie. Um, and you know they didn't kill the Grum Goalie. Let us on top of that. So I could, so I block Gutter Bones. They draw a card. So would I rather take two or put the Gutter Bones in the graveyard and let them draw a card? Might as well block. The Great Henge. We just got like two. Th we just got like two free three threes out there. Free three threes. Because you know, like our our hand had two growth chamber guardians. Now our hand still has two growth chamber guardians. Ooh, what if they Legion's End? That would be bad. That would be bad. I should probably block just to keep them from Legion's Ending. I guess they would have done that already. Hmm. If I don't block, they get Gutter Bones back. Yeah, I'm just going to say no. Definitely hoping for the land drop there. Kill Midnight Reaper. <laughs> I never I never before thought that a henge could be so great. Never looked at a henge and was like, and thought, man, that's a pretty great henge. All right, double check. Triple check. Okay. Lay down right here. Just lay down right here. You need to sit down in front of the screen so I can't see the screen. You can sit down right here. All these things I'm trying to play, I'm just trying to move my arm away from you attacking me. <clears throat> Spawn of mayhem. Yay, land.
had to have the distraction pen. All right, so this makes all right non-humans enter with one-one counter. So this will enter as a four-four as well. So I can play Tulsimer and kill Spawn of Mayhem with that, or I can just play a, a large Hellkite. But then if they have removal for Hellkite, I'll kind of it'll be a little rough. I'm just gonna play the Tulsimer. This is like a you know just a safer play against removal spell. And of course, if, if we get to untap with Hellkite, we can machine gun down some 1-1s. One so that's not too much of a problem. I think I want to just play the Great Henge this, this next turn. Just get it in play. Start gaining life. Drawing cards. Our deck's titled Naya Great Henge. We should probably play our Great Henge. Yeah, the yeah, Demir Affinity was really impressive. It was a lot of fun to play and it and it felt really strong also. It was good. Yeah, we get to do Haste Hellkite and still get a counter with Grumgully and a counter with the Great Henge. I guess I shouldn't have played my land. Just like you. Dang. Thought I had lethal. I was kind of making sure. They just left the one blocker. I didn't have the... No, I didn't have the... I was one off of playing Hellkite plus Ronis. Alright, well, Devout Decrees look pretty good. Probably want some flame sweeps. Yeah, a six six flying haste that also kills the blocker. That's a pretty good card. 
All right, so we probably don't have time for questing beast. Or sorry, for for beast whisper. Just trim incubation druids that die to flame sweep. I don't know. We can't. We can't just have like. We'll trim one great henge. Can't just have like a super high curve. Charming Prince is so cool though. And the Ronus. Yeah, we didn't we didn't really see anything that targets there, but yeah, Veil of Summer would stop, you know, Murderous Rider if they're playing Noxious Grass, such a sideboard, you know, like we'll we'll kind of see what their deck looks like here post board. Thankfully we you know, we're up a game, so we don't have to panic too much. And we'll see it. Good yeah, there's a good chance that maybe we want to just be playing the Veil of Summers with it being just such a strong card. Bill Summer is just too good. But we'll, we'll try playing a game without it. Like, if your opponent activates Priest of Forgotten Gods, and then you Veil, that's pretty rough. Alright, I don't, I don't necessarily want to draw more lands. I'm just going to fetch... Gonna land out of the deck. Does mean that I may need to shock in future moments. Rude. Rather get spawn of mayhem here with this decree. Down, 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 down. Um. Because nah. I'm planning on next turn playing Oketra, and then the turn after that playing Ravager Worm. So I wouldn't play that that questing beast until like the turn after that. <clears throat> I don't know if we need it by then. I wouldn't have mind untapped land that you know didn't shock. That is. Here for Steel Leaf Champion. Fortunately, the Steel Leaf Champion didn't survive the rotation. No one survived. Nothing survives the rotation. Father Time is undefeated. Shocklands. Nothing but Shocklands is rough. All right. So yeah, we're we're definitely playing all the Veil of Summers. We're obviously just going to be playing a bunch of Veil of Summers. Get all of them in there. Guess I can cut Vivian. Uh, 
All right, so yeah, they had <clears throat> three targeted removal spells there. And Priest of Forgotten Gods. It's like four. Come on, deck. Uh, why do we have to have all lands, no lands? I mean, if I if this was like a white land, maybe I could keep it with like you know Charming Prince having the scry too. Let's get rid of these. Honestly, maybe I should have just kept four lands Veil of Summer. No. Well, we should keep Tulsimer. I'm gl glad we drew a land. Yeah. Six drop. Yuck. Jeez. I was actually planning on I was actually planning on cycling Veil of Summer whenever they cast the Rotting Regisaur there, to be honest. But I I just clicked like okay, let the Regisaur resolve, but then it didn't stop at end step. It just kept on going to my turn. But I was actually planning on casting this like right afterwards. Uh, thanks for your poker. All right, so I'm glad they I'm glad they tapped out. We get to play this. Kill the knight. Get a chump blocker. Really like to, you know, I'd like to draw a land and be able to play Oketra with Veil of Summer back up this next turn. That would be really nice. That's that's ideal. It's drawing a land here. Mm. I can't really double block. I kind of want to not block. The problem with the not the the biggest problem with just taking this. Really, the only problem with taking this is spawn of mayhem. Is that they just have spawn of mayhem in hand. Don't think I can. Yeah, or Wrinkle. Yeah, Wrinkle's another one. Why can't I just draw a land? Why does it ha this have to cost 5, 5, and 6 mana, and I have 5, and but I need to have Veil of Summer available?
I really don't want to play Oketra. They just kill Oketra. They just kill Growth Chamber Guardian. You know, I'm like, whatever. A little surprised no Orzhov Enforcer attack, to be honest. Do have more removal. Yeah, Registor could could definitely be worth a decree. I I wanted to, so my plan was to be able to double block. They try to kill my like my double block, and then I use and then I use Veil of Summer. And we kill the Regisaur, and I save the decree for a Rankle or, or something like that. Um, and you know, forces them to discard another card, as we saw, like them discard like that, that Noctis Grasp there. That was my plan. They're kind of having to discard all their cards, and I like that. Like they've been discarding good cards. They discarded Rankle and then Noxious Grasp. So they're kind of down to nothing. Oketra will come back. We're at nine still. Come on. Ideally, we draw, like, this top card is something that we get to play, and we can kind of wait for Growth Chamber Guardians for after Oketra, ideally.
Death touch. Whoops. <clears throat> Alright, they're down to 11. We got a bunch of stuff. Down to eight. Should be game. Good draw with the Hellkite. Boom. Oh yeah, we did mold a five that game, didn't we? I forgot about that. That was that game, right? That we mold a five? I think it was. No, maybe... No, I think we lost the game that we mulled the five. And then maybe kept that one. I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, they... Yeah, with them just having exactly three mana, they could only play one thing a turn. And then Regisaur... You know, Regisaur discarded, like, four cards. And so it helped us... Stabilize there. That was the mulled five? Okay. So, yeah, like... You know, like, Regisaur... You know, made my opponent mulligan a bunch also, of course the Regisaur hit very hard and so it was difficult to stabilize but we allowed us to oh yeah we had the Tuls the Tulsimer saved us that turn they tapped out to activate was like the turn for us if they just don't if they don't tap out there and just leave up removal we're dead so yeah that was that was the turn that, could, that helped get us there Grumgully. I I kept the slow hand, but unfortunately, you know, I was hoping like you know the draws would kind of help smooth it out. Unfortunately, the draws didn't. Charming Prince. Stomping ground. Ilharg. Did not really help smooth it out. That helps, though. Let's draw a land. I want to start playing these five drops. We got Ronus, we got Ilhark, we got Hellkite. Let's play a five drop here. Ilhark. Ilhark! Ilhark! We got the pig. Yeah, Ilhar Gronis. Such a good combo. Alright, Zedalam, have a good night. Boo. I'll just play Ronus as a blocker over Hellkite. If they have removal, I'd rather them kill Ronus than kill Hellkite. Okay. 
could have just played Charming Prince gain three and then Vivian or even like Charming Prince scry two and then Vivian, you know, make it a four, four. Why would you not cast Once Upon a Time first? How does that make sense? Oh, yes. Oh, no. I am Scala's Vengeance, and I'm coming for you next. We're gonna tear you apart. Charming Prince just gets eaten by the wolf. It's fine. Means they're not killing Ronas. Uh, not, not, not really. We haven't had any big henge plays too much yet. Not really. We had one turn in the second match where we got to play a 6-6 six, six Hellkai with haste be because of Grumgull and Henge. That was like our only card that we've played with too much with Henge in play. Wow, they didn't kill Vivian? Wow. They didn't kill Vivian. Well, time to increase our board presence by playing Ilharg. Yeah, I thought for sure they are just going to attack with the two creatures and kill Vivian. Ugh. <laughs> Come on, opponent. I'm going to be ticking up and putting both counters on Ilharg. I'm going to make Ilharg as large as possible and not not make it easy for them to kill Ilharg. Uh, Ronas has Death Touch anyway, but I, I don't want them to be able to double block Ilharg easily whenever I, I attack with Ilharg. I'm probably leaving Ronas back on D anyway, so like we'll attack with Ilharg, put in Hellkite. We're fit enough to survive. And then, you know, with a counter where I can just activate Hellkite and, like, maybe mow down this goose, maybe. Keep this. You've got a good head on those shoulders. For now. That's unfortunate. Try not to lose your head out here.
Well, that was a great turn for our opponent. This happens when you get you just have so much mana. That was just a great turn. I'm playing five drops, they're playing a four and a six drop. All right, Quad Veil of Summer again. And... Don't think we need Decree. We'll cut... Prince. I mean, I like the Prince, but them playing all these Wicked Wolves. I guess we need to have a little bit bigger creatures. Maybe playing Vivians isn't the best idea against said Wolves. Or, or against the questing beasts, sorry. I want to play Unbreakable Formation. Oh. I guess I do need to play one, one extra card. We're actually going to play something and then have three mana available, though. I'll play one Flame Sweep. They had a lot of mana creatures. A lot of smaller creatures. They had Biogenic Ooze. But if we time it right, we could Flame Sweep. All right, we'll ditch the Ronus. We need Chance for Glory. Yo, Campfire Studios. Thank you so much there, Campfire Studios. Thanks for that tier three sub for two years now. Over two years. I really appreciate that. And thanks everybody else getting the hype boats in. Showing love for Campfire Studios. All right, time to get lands out of the deck. I mean, I guess. I guess this was actually kind of a bad play. Cause I could have I could have just played Forest, Bone Crusher Giant, kill the Incubation Druid, then untap and play Bone Crusher Giant. And then next turn questing beast. That, that was a bad play by me. Alright. Cause I mean obviously they're gonna be playing the Druid, they they revealed the Druid to us. I'm glad I brought in a flame sweep though. Flame sweep would be a nice one to draw. All right, fetching out a bunch of lands. That's already eight lands out of the deck. I think I'm only playing like 24. No, yeah, we got 25. Okay. 
fate of, of the elder gods digital coming soon love it kickstarter is launching on monday hmm That would have been better if I would have played this Bone Crutcher Giant before. Awesome. <clears throat> I guess. I don't really want to trade Questing Beast for Growth Chamber Guardian. Yeah, it doesn't. Sound like a great trade. We'll keep the Ravager Worm available this next turn. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit of a tilt. Wish I would have played that turn two differently. All right, but we got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine lands out of the deck already. Stay on the trail. If I if I attack with Bone Crusher Giant, also you know they like they double block the Bone Crusher Giant, then Garrick goes back up to three loyalty and can kill Questing Beast. Stay on the trail. So Grum Goalie can make an army of three threes with the Growth Chamber Guardians, but it's more efficient to have them as four fours, because then a four four trades with two wolves or you know like one growth chamber guardian instead of Three threes only trade with one wolf. Yeah, I, I don't know why they killed the Ravager Worm and not the Questing Beast. That doesn't make the most sense. Here, then go double, double. We'll see if this pays out trading the questing beast away or not. Surprised they didn't. 
would have thought they would have like double blocked, you know, one of these things to kill one of these things and then just th thrown a goose in front of another instead of just throwing away two wolves. If the two wolves were going to die, like they could have traded a base. Basically, they could have traded goose for either my 4 4 or my 4 3. And they didn't make that trade. They don't have, like, Liliana. Looks like my opponent's stabilizing. We're flooding out over here. <clears throat> um, I guess I kill this thing. Three, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12. Alright, 12 lands down out of 21 cards. Thirteen lands out of twenty-two. <laughs> I know, we need the Great Hedge. Yeah. Hello, sniper's wife. Thanks for watching. Ugh. They're stabilizing. And Wizard's Girlfriend also watching. Hello. Hope y'all are enjoying these. If you don't play MTG, we're enjoying the stream still. All right. So many chump blockers over there. So little life. What? They didn't block the Oketra? That had to have been an, a mishap. That was a misclick right there. I guess misclick is the correct terminology. Well, we finally finished them off. Finally got there. Surprisingly enough. <laughs> You're calling a punt there? Yeah. Kind of calling a punt there. Let's play another flame sweep over this other Grum Goalie. Ugh. No, they they're basically only playing green stuff. Like Decree gets rid of Garrick. But they're basically just playing green creatures. You know, black removal green creatures. Could have Spyglass for Garrick. Hey, All-Star. Yeah, we're, we're streaming late here tonight. We're already 
30 minutes over when we usually get done streaming. My girlfriend's square root of negative 100. She's a 10, but also imaginary. Aw. I'll just kind of lead off with all these shock lands. Obviously, we're going to crush the goose on turn two here. Oh, I guess I need to crush that thing. I want to crush the goose. Stomp. I think we stomp the crab or stomp the goose. All right, we'll stomp the crab. The crab or the goose. If we could stop drawing lands, that would be just fine. If we could just stop drawing lands, that would be just fine. Why not wait for my opponent to adapt? Because if they play correctly, they won't adapt. Like I like I wouldn't adapt if I was my opponent. I would just hold up mana and pass the turn again, and then I would then I just wasted my mana. I think it's just safer to kill before that's an option. All right, I'm just I'm cracking these fable passages before scrying. Gotta help our our um it's gotta help our flooding problems if we take lands out of the deck, right? We can't just keep drawing lands if we take lands out. You would think. So like yeah, like that's kind of the problem the problem with temp like playing temple there is like let's say you scry a land to the bottom with temple. Well then you're just gonna shuffle it back whenever you play the the fetch lands like if you if you play you know if you scry something you don't want to the bottom you just shuffle it right back after you play the after you shuffle with those so I feel like I just want to shuffle first get those things out and then now like whenever I actually scry will truly scry now of course growth chamber guardian changes that again We're just shuffling some more. So like, the value of the scry, like the scry, is it is valuable if it just the card gets shuffled right back. All right, well, dealing with this Wicked Wolf is going to be a problem with these geese here also. That could kill one goose.
Yeah, this is this is a problem just having goose wolf. Hey, 619. Break time at work. Very nice. Welcome, welcome. So yeah, I didn't get great value out of that scry. I put a land to the bottom, but we just shuffled it back. We need a great henge. Where's a great henge? Ugh, not another land. We need to put pressure back on our opponent also. Thirteen lands drawn. Like, look at my opponent over there with just five lands. <laughs> they've just been able to, like, play all their stuff, and they've, they've had five lands. They get to play, like, so many things. I'm over here with 13 lands. With these fetch lands. Gone through a lot more cards because of these. Watch out. These woods get awful dark. Growth Chamber Guardians, but... Stay on. That was a really good draw. Wicked Wolf out of here. Now, how am I dealing with this? Garrick, I don't know. But one problem down. can't just like really sit back and let them just make two twos right I can't do that Correct. If, if I attack my opponent emblems and I lose. So 
still just gets emblem. But at least we don't lose a creature, I guess. We are relentless. These things have trample. Oh, they have trample. Well, death touch trample is just GG. I leave the Golgari now. Step aside or be crushed. All right, looks like we're two and one. Good game. Too many lands for us. Not enough Great Henges. Not enough Great Henges. All right, two and one. I'll keep trying to fight back here. Yeah, Garrick is very good. Yes, that. Yeah, Garrick is is a very good Planeswalker. Um, and yeah, it. It defeated us there with that ultimate. But yeah, it's, it's very good. I don't know where the Great Henge was. It was not in our hand, that's for sure. Yeah, the Hidden Henge. Yeah, Demir Affinity is up on YouTube. All, all three other decks are already up on YouTube. And by already, I mean it's... We're getting close to 11. More Once Upon a Time. All right, so I'm playing Questing Beast next turn. Potentially Ronus the turn after. Well, obviously, Vivian with Questing Beast is just incredible. <laughs> Are you liking the one that was Gruel better? We we did a whole lot better drawing the Great Henge with the Gruel deck. You know, we're playing three Great Henges in this one also. We just have not been drawing it at all. Yeah, I'm getting tired. It's getting late. Getting late. I love everything from deer to dinosaurs. <laughs> Could kill Knight of the Ebon Legion there. I'll just get a lot of damage in. Especially when we have a backup questing beast and a Ronus. Please just do that. Just that. Just that. No other attacks. No other attacks. 
No other attacks, please. Oh my gosh. They made just one attack at Vivian. They're dead. They don't know they're dead yet, but they're dead. Ah, I've endured worse. They don't know they're dead. This will be fun to watch. <laughs> this will be fun to watch. I agree, Vivian. Yeah, Hawkeye, you gotta wait. You gotta wait a little while for your dinner tonight. <laughs> There's no dinner up there. What are you doing? There's no dinner up there. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay. Well, that was pretty sweet still. Questing Beast Vivian Ronis. So Decree, Flame Sweep. Maybe three Veil of Summer. We're kind of just keep on playing against these black, like green black aggro. Like we're just kind of sideboarding the same. We'll just keep playing against the same deck. Cutting some of our weaker cards. Yeah, there are three henges in here. We just, we just never drawn one. Yeah. There's three in here. And we're just never drawing them. The double Ravager Worm looks a little rough. Draw red mana. Red mana. We'll see what our opponent does. If they activate knight, I'll have to decree it. Even though I'd, I'd you know, much rather cast flame sweep this next turn. I hope they don't activate knight. Gross. Want land. That card wouldn't be that bad to draw because it blocks questing beast. Seed. <laughs> Just get me out of this game. <laughs> Questing Beast is so good. Get these Knight of Autumns in here. Let me get rid of the Flame Sweep. Let's get Knight of Autumn in here. Knight of Autumn trades with Qu Questing Beast or could kill Lucky Clover. Oh, 
Both of those seem pretty ideal. Ugh. All right, come on, deck. We've had some really bad luck on game threes today. We had a Mulda four earlier. This isn't the best mold of six, obviously, when you land. You're playing Bant Golas and keep getting wrecked by Questing Beast. Any advice on what cards to play to handle Questing Beast? Um... In Bant? I mean, Knight of Autumn? It's just a good Swiss Army knife. You can just play it as a 4-3 blocker. I had, had an opponent do that against me. Like, you know, I was trying to play Questing Beast to attack, and they played Knight of Autumn as a blocker, and then was also able to put Knight of Autumn back in their hand with Time Wipe. So saving my Bone Crusher Giant, if they have a Questing Beast, we'll be able to block it. Of course, they're not going to attack. Um... Cool. Glad well, that night works out there. All right, Blue Gen. Have a good night. Oh, this game's lagging. Come on, take action. There we go. Can we draw a Great Henge, please? Please draw a Great Henge. Please, deck. Pretty please. The Great Henge. Pretty please, the Great Henge. Yay! The Great Henge. The Great Henge. It finally worked. Finally drew one. I guess I should grab white. Well, 
Well, now our deck's doing it. Now we're doing it. Sure, we'll just trade with a bunch of Death Touch Knights. Make their Smitten Swordmasters work in, worse and everything. Now we're doing it. This is this is where it goes crazy. Great Henge and Oketra. Like how like what are you gonna have to to deal with this opponent? This one's likely over. So they want me to draw first before killing Oketra? To try to dump Oketra farther into the library. We got, we got Oketra back for next turn. <laughs> Welcome back, Oketra. And now we have the double incubation druid, so like those things can add a ton of mana. Also. Because, you know, like they have the counter, so these things both add three mana each. So, of course, Ronus will kill my opponent. Kind of don't want to cast Ronus. Yet. <clears throat> I did board out Vivian, so no, no Vivian. <sighs> Ronus with Questing Beast, of course, is lethal. I guess not quite lethal now. So yeah, I get to play all this other stuff. What's up, Squid? Thanks to the Twitch Prime sub there, Squid. Sub number 25 on the day. We're out of those. We can Ronus next turn. All right, let me update our. Oh, you're welcome, Squid. Get we need to get some more hype boats in the chat for Squid here. There we go. All right, so we we there's a chance we have lethal this next turn. I haven't counted it out yet. But also, maybe not.
Haven't quite counted it out. Oh, I need to do that in the other order. We don't get to draw a card. Oh, we still draw a card. That's crazy. Alright, is this lethal? Okay, I'll put some down to three. So violent. 77. Negative 77. It's a negative Luka. Negative Luka Doncic. Over there. All right, three and one. Now we've had a, a longer league. Ar Arena's getting laggy. I'm going to reset. <laughs> yeah, that was... That's also, yeah... Oh, Ketra is kind of perfect for the Great Henge because, you know, like with the Great Henge giving you extra cards or like, you know, Ketra, you want to be able to cast lots of creatures and the Great Henge is like, well, here's lots of creatures. <laughs> All right. Reset. Two more quick wins here, Hawkeye. That's it. Two more quick wins. Our Grixis Reanimator League took like no time, like took like under an hour. So it's surprising that we're this far over, but it looked the the affinity deck was like a three hour league. <laughs> uh, Temple of Mystery. We can probably play this. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's what so green does. It's a good EDH color. Just putting creatures on the board, draw cards. I don't want to activate Growth Chamber Guardian and then it get, gets bounced. If it's Brazen Borrower. So we'll do, do that during their turn. It just looks like Simic Flash. Not a very well timed brazen borrower. Doesn't feel like it anyway. If they're willing to just bounce it before damage happens, they should have just bounced it on their end step before I went and grabbed another one, like like when I adapted. If they were just planning on bouncing it anyway. Uh, the Grixis Reanimator deck is is right in there. Oh, there you go. 
you know, it's one of the first four decks there on the Stream Decker page. That's the problem with not casting anything here. So I did leave myself open to Ambusher. By not casting anything. Hey, Zan, yeah, life is good. Yep, life is good. Oh, I'm sorry, Hawkeye. Okay. It's just hard to play when, when you sit there. I know you love to sit there, though. Don't like where I'm at. I should have just jammed a five drop last turn to, to keep them from playing Ambusher. <clears throat> so McFlash is kind of the bane of Expensive. Decks playing expensive spells everywhere. I don't know what happened with my opponent. I don't know if they, they disconnected maybe. Didn't this happen with like our first opponent? This happened with like our first opponent this league, right? They disconnected. It's it's really unfortunate. Unfortunate for them. right there. Yeah, it looks like they disconnected. Well, it's not the most interesting game, so I'm sorry about that. But Hawkeye found the spot right where we wanted some extra scratches. Oh no, I have to go control the mouse again, Hawkeye. I'm sorry.
<laughs> it's okay, so make a flash is as exciting as a DC. Oh. <laughs> Ambush her best away from away from Key's creature. I know it's still it's still doing work for you, even if you're AFK. It's like, oh, it, <laughs> if you didn't do anything because you're AFK, well then, here's all these bonuses. All right, final boss, Hawkeye. We're on the final boss. Are you ready, Hawkeye? Last match of the night. Hopefully we get to end this on a high note with a win. Let's get that final boss playlist up and going. All right, hope you like it, Matthew. Hmm. Ugh, doesn't really look better. Incubation Druid just works so well with Vivian that even though the Paradise Druid is safer to keep. Let's get a Redland. <sighs> Needed a Greenland. I will take Knight of the Ebon Legion out. That card is really powerful. Are they going to let me get War Boss also? No War Boss. To make a card that disconnects your opponent when played. Ugh. Is this vampires and goblins? Dual tribal synergies here. Vampires and goblins.
I would like to do something. Well, it doesn't seem like my opponent has too much going on over there, so like if we just get to untap with these two and get to play Tulsimer. That first Paradise block has made my opponent pretty scared to attack with a war boss now. All right, Tulsimer is a big game here. This could be Rakdos Cavalcade. That could be it. Kind of stabilized. Stabilized ish. Bone Crusher. Good draw. Oh, yeah, Vivian's doing really good. Yeah, I like Vivian. Just, I also just really like this card. I think it's just really strong and very underrated. Of course, it is a little difficult to cast, admittedly. to six. But it's just such a good good card. With the arc bow at my side, I can't lose a fight. You picked the wrong fight. All right, Pwn Factory. Take care. I think we stabilized. Yes, we did. All right, Flame Sweeps. Devout Decrees. Um, kind of feel like I just want that, and we're going to take out a, I mean, I guess I maybe should just take out the Vivians, to be honest, unfortunately. And a Ravager Worm and a Ronus. I'll take out a Grum Gully. No. Just take out a five drop. Which I guess is Ronus. Okay. Yeah, Knight of Autumn Life Gain could could be fine. Hopefully we have enough life gain with having the, the charming princes. The problem with with Knight of Autumn Life Gain is whenever you choose the night the life gain option, then it's just um, like honestly, maybe it's better than Grum Gully though, but because you can make it a four three. But whenever you choose the life gain option, then it's a two one, and the two one is is pretty bad at blocking and everything. This is rough. We 
We can't get red and white. I need red and white. All right, we're gonna get white so we can scry. Look for red mana. Come on, deck. Don't do, don't do this. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks, yeah. Okay, so cute. Red mana. Ugh. So I'm taking the Knight of the Ebon Legion because it can just be so much bigger, but. And, you know, not get flames sweeped. Right, this is. this. I mean, this is the game. Do we draw red mana? Yes or no? This is the game right here. The answer was no. All right, so they are, at least we learned that they are Cavalcade. So they are Rakdos Cavalcade. So I guess Knight of Autumn's <clears throat> work against Cavalcade. Let's bring these things in. We'll generously trim those and What incubation druid? Ugh. Game three against the final boss. This is it. Good hand, good hand. Got some good removal. Beast Whisper can be card advantage also. Playing forest here and holding up stomp. Why not trim a henge or two? Basically, because the life gain with henge. I really like the life gain it, and kind of because like our our deck is named after henge. But I could see, I could definitely see trimming one. It is hard hard to cast, but like if we stable, you know, like if we play a creature, great henge can really help us stabilize, gaining two life every turn. It's pretty big. That's right, we're still going. This is our last game of the night, though. They're just doing nothing. Stabilized. God Eternal Oketra. I'm gonna go with a different one. Different song here. Need something a little more upbeat.
trying to finish this out. Oh no, Ember Cleave. That's kind of scary. Not too scary, I suppose. We're gonna have a bunch of four fours. I guess we have that taken care of. Oh, Ketra lets you stabilize. That was a pretty poor auto tap. But all right, we did it. Five win with Naya Great Henge. The worst part about our deck, Caesar. Thanks for the congrats there, Caesar. Thanks for that resub. Um, the worst part about this deck is we did a really bad job drawing the Great Henge. <laughs> we were trying to play, you know, the Great Henge of Naya over here, and we didn't do a very good job of drawing the Great Henge. We only, we really only had like that one game. Even though it's a three of, and even though we played a lot of longer games, you know, this is not a short league. Um, we got aided in a couple of wins by opponent disconnects. So that, that helped us out twice with opponent disconnects there. But it still did pretty well. It still did pretty well overall. Um, yeah. Everything worked out pretty good. All right, I need to go feed Hawkeye, so we're gonna get out of here. So if you're watching the video later on YouTube, yeah, the red, yeah, the red helped. Yeah, playing red definitely helped. Anyway, if you're watching the video later on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe buttons over there and also leave some comments. Let me know what you think of the deck. If you're trying out the deck yourself, let me know how it's going for you and everything like that. But that's it here for Naya the Greyhenge. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you for the next video.